Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to my review for Ted 2, which of course is the second film in the Ted series created by Seth MacFarlane, the creator of a Family Guy, American Dad, Cleveland Show, Dads, Dads. That was a great show. Got canceled way too soon. Hilarious. But let me tell you what was actually hilarious, because Dad's was a abysmal show. I was just kidding. Uh, let me tell you what was hilarious. I thought Ted 1 was really funny. A Million Ways to Die in the West, not so much. I, I didn't hate it as much as everybody else did. I actually didn't hate it. I thought it was actually funny here and there. Um, but I thought Ted 1 was hilarious. That was a really funny movie with a lot of heart, a lot of great moments, comedic moments. It wasn't just the same old shit that we see in a lot of movies where it's just dick jokes and fart jokes. I mean, don't get me wrong, there were dick jokes and fart jokes, but at least they tried to make them a little bit different besides just a fat guy coming in and farting. Everybody's like, oh, this is Kevin James sure knows how to be funny and fat. So uh, in this movie, in this movie, in the last movie, they didn't do that. And I was hoping in Ted 2, they would keep with that. They would keep with the the clever sight gags with the fart jokes, all that stuff. And even some of the good lines here and there. So let us talk about the sequel to Ted with Ted Dos. So let, let's, let's talk about it. The story for Ted 2 is very simple. You have John, played by Mark Wahlberg, who recently got separated from his wife, Mila Kunis, from the first film. They don't really really explain exactly what happened but whatever she's not in the movie so screw her uh and of course she, he still hangs out with ted who has a wife now tammy lynn i think her name is from the first film um and they're married and all that mark Wahlberg, he's all sad he's, he's masturbating to porn all that stuff and ted decides you know what my marriage isn't really working out it's been a year since we got married we need to get a kid we need to have a kid but the problem is I need a sperm donor because, of course, I'm a teddy bear. So, of course, Mark, Wal Wal Mark Wahlberg's like, yeah, yeah, bro, I'll do it. I'll, do it. I'll jerk off in the cup. Man, I'll do it. And he does it. And the um, problem is is that the court, the law, or the, the government thinks that Teddy or Ted shouldn't really be a uh, person. Doesn't really qualify as a person. So he can't really have a kid. He can't adopt a kid. He can't have... He doesn't even, he doesn't really have rights, he's just an object. So of course, Ted is like, no, screw that, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Peter Griffin, and he goes uh, and fights the law, fights the power. They play that song in, in the trailer, so that's why he goes to get his civil rights back. Which is perfect timing, considering the gay marriage thing just happened. So hey, you know, <laughs> good timing there, Seth MacFarlane, it's like you knew. Did you know? I think you knew. What's surprising about Ted 2's story is that it actually has some serious moments. Like, the tone, like, dramatically shifts from comedy about fart jokes and pop culture jokes to a serious civil rights courtroom drama at times. And there's a couple of scenes when they're actually in a courtroom and it's not just played up for laughs. Now, don't get me wrong, there are a couple moments here and there in the courtrooms where it's like, ha ha ha, they said something funny. But for the most part, it's either Amanda Seyfried or even Morgan Freeman in a courtroom or, or John Slattery from Mad Men in a court, like actually reading actual dialogue, not just fart, like dialogue that's leading up to a dick joke. Actual dialogue about civil rights. And I thought that was really strange and, like I said, perfect timing <laughs> considering. Um, and I just thought it was really strange how totally awkward it is. I, I, I do appreciate what Seth MacFarlane was doing with that. I really, really do because, man, they could have did a Ted, I mean, I'm sorry, they could have did a, a Hangover Part 2 with this where they just completely rip off the story of the first movie and change a thing here and there. But they could have just made it about what Ted 1 was about except now... Ted and his girlfriend don't want to be with, or, or his girlfriend doesn't want to be with Mark, because, I'm sorry, not Mark, that's the actor's name, John, because I don't know, John's a bad influence or whatever. They could have did the exact same thing, except opposite. But they didn't, they actually went for a civil rights story, and I thought that was interesting. And for the most part, it wasn't bad, it was just totally awkward, it really wasn't that bad. It was actually pretty well written when it got into the courtroom scenes, and it had a, a few decent worthy moments, I would say. Just some, some nice heart to it, which I appreciated. I thought Seth MacFarlane actually tried. He could have just completely made up some crap-ass story or just a, the same story as the first movie, but he actually decided to do something different, which I appreciated. I felt like Seth MacFarlane was like, you know what? I, wanna, I just want to do something different. I want to I wanna make the same kind of comedy that I've been doing, except tell a little story. And for the most part, it was okay. 
Now, don't get me wrong, you get plenty of the Ted One stuff where it's just dick jokes, fart jokes, pop, pop culture jokes, Kardashian jokes, weed jokes, everything. You get all that stuff. Semen jokes. And don't get me wrong, that stuff is there. And for the most part, I actually thought that stuff was really funny. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought it did. I mean, I thought it did. Yeah, I thought it did. Now I sound like the target audience for this movie. Uh, I thought it did. I thought it was real gooder. It was gooder than Ted One. No. I thought this movie was really funny at times. Uh, but I will admit, there are times here and there where the jokes definitely slip and fall flat. And some of them are actually like, uh. But a lot of them are actually really, really funny. So I will, I will say about the first hour is where all those jokes are like really funny. And it's always, it's very lighthearted. It takes itself like to the next level like this whole scene about uh, Mark Wahlberg's porn that's just like we need to destroy the laptop and then they just keep going further and further with that joke it's just like now we have to bury in the ocean and I was like okay it just kept going there's a lot of jokes like that and I thought that was really funny how insane it just went with the humor so yeah I would say a lot of the movie was funny it was I, I thought it was well written for the most part all the civil rights stuff was decent uh, I thought a lot of the jokes were more hit than miss. I would say a good 70% hit for me and 30% missed. So a lot of people won't agree with me because I know a lot of people don't like this film. But a lot of people don't like Seth MacFarlane's humor and I'm okay with it. I like pop culture jokes. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm good with those. As long as they're funny and won't be out of our like they won't be dated in 10 years like I don't think a Kardashian joke will be dated in 10 years because Kardashians are so big but if you made a joke about I don't know freaking uh like disaster movie you made a joke about uh, like Iron Man or Beowulf <laughs> then that's dated. I don't know why I brought up the disaster movie. I just fucking hate that movie. But um, this movie does the, the pop culture right. It has good funny dialogue. Some really funny moments. Some really just really <laughs> bad humor. Not bad like like oh uh, that was terrible. But like just bad as, in a sense that if you're just a horrible person you'll probably laugh at that. And of course I laugh. So I don't know what that says about me. I know what it says about me. But... <laughs> I'll pretend I don't know. But um, overall, I thought it was really funny. Had some serious moments that I appreciated, even though it had a tonal shift. Uh, all the actors do a great job here. Mark Wahlberg, even though he has less to do this time, he's still great, especially when he's with Ted. Uh, Seth MacFarlane does a great job. Uh, the CG on Ted uh, himself is flawless, just like in the first movie. You can't even tell that it's a CG effect. And at times, I don't know if it is or is not. Like, times where he's just, like, laying on the ground or something. I'm not sure if he is supposed to be a special effect there or if he's actually a teddy bear. Most likely he actually is. But the special effects are flawless. Uh, Amanda Seyfried joins, and she's fun. Um, there's a lot of really funny cameos, especially uh, one involving Trix, the cereal. Uh, I thought that was a really funny one. Um, everybody does a great job. Even Morgan Freeman, very short role, but he's good. John Lynch shows up. He's fun. Uh, everybody's great in their roles for the most part and funny. So overall, I actually really enjoyed Ted 2. Uh, tonal shifts and some awkward humor at times bring it down, but for the most part, I think this is a good film. Uh, well, a fun film at least, an entertaining movie. Uh, I give Ted 2, I'm going to give it a 28 out of a 40. And if you don't like it, you can lick me, me butt. Okay, bye.